Forster, Arkansas was a sawmill town started in the 1930s. Uh, I believe in the 1940s it was the biggest sawmill in all of Arkansas. And by about 1953, they closed it down and left this place completely vacant. Uh, it's an extinct town in Arkansas. And a lot of the remains of the mill are still here. And it's a really beautiful spot, so I'm going to take you guys around, do a little bit of explaining about how it worked, and uh, show you the beautiful site. All right, guys, here in Forrester, this was an old bridge where they would be able to cross from this side, across the river, over to that side. And look at this original stonework on this bridge. It's just beautiful. All right, here we go. We're going to town. All right, next up, we got a little hidden pond in Forrester, and it had to be the spot. What a beautiful place. I'm sure they were here as soon as work was done. I'm gonna come back here and do some camping this spring, and I cannot wait to bring the Volkswagen out here and do some fishing. I promise to bring you guys with me. All right, we're actually getting to town now. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, this here is the log pond at Forrester. And what would happen is they would bring the logs in on train. They would unload them just here beside the pond, roll them into the pond, and they would float them over to the mill that's just right over here around the corner. This was a big part of town it made it a lot easier to get those logs over there. They could pile this pond full and get to the logs when they were ready and not stop the train from delivering the logs. Water tower, the largest storage tank in Forrester near the two deep wells that provided water for the sawmill and fire protection. Standing 90 feet tall, the tank held 75,000 gallons of water from this tank was provided to the town via relay pump houses scattered throughout the town. All right, we can see the feet of the water tower one two three and four the back ones back behind and then there's a little concrete thing in the middle big tall tree there now i could imagine that's probably about the height of the water tower and its peak right now you can see there's some giant concrete structures and this is where all the the mill and everything was set up and uh how it all worked is beyond me but Let's go climb through there and see what's going on. I'm gonna walk around and show you this structure. It's pretty wild. See, they got a nice little bench here. You can see a lot of pocket holes and stuff, you know? I like to think that a log went in here. I don't really know. I think this might have been the well. I don't know that either. Very cool structure though. Hi, Lindsay. With this being the 40s and it being the largest sawmill in Arkansas, they must have been doing a lot of work here. And boy, I wish I could see it in its heyday. All right, guys, this is the pavilion at Forrester. And I don't actually know how long it's been here, but it is a beautiful work of art. So let's look at some of the beams and stuff that are inside this pavilion. 
picnic tables are built around the poles. Which I think is really neat. You would have a lot of people here to feed. You can see the concrete feet they used in a lot of the other structures. And This is where everybody gathers to do a reunion. Pretty sure they do it every year, but it's been weird since COVID, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to make it out here for one of those. All right, here they have a bunch of like class photos. Um, this was fourth and fifth grade in 1947 through 1948. Just really, really cool history here. Here is maps of the town and such. A school band, forester deer hunts. And here is the map of the town, which I know is very hard to see, but if you'll just let me explain. Here's the log pond. Here's the water tower. Here was where the mill stuff was. Um, they had post office, oil tanks, doctor's home, drugstore, commissary, ice, the depot for the train, and right here is where the train come through. There was a route that would take it here next to the log pond to unload the logs. I promise to show you guys more of that in the future when I get the research done. Let's move on to another cool spot before it gets dark. Dry kiln and cooling shed. The kiln was approximately seven, five feet in length. Green lumber was transferred from the mill by transfer cars. The kiln was used to naturally, use natural draft for air circulation. Steam coals were in the kilns as a drying agent. Process one, air comes into the bottom of the kiln. Process two, heat rises and makes air circulation that carries air past steam coils which are on top and sides of the kiln. The cooling shed aligned with the kiln and received rough dry lumber after drying process. All right guys, you can see this is littered with stone. That's actually those wooden concrete foundations. And I think this is where they put the wood as it was coming to dry. And then it would load it behind me into the kiln. Now the kiln has mostly fallen down, but we're going to go climb up there and take a look at it. All right, guys, so you can see here, these little chambers, that's where the air would go through, I think. We've got holes in the walls, too. See this little stack has fallen down. There's one that's still standing. And you see the roof has collapsed. Here's the roof over here. Unfortunately guys, it got laid on me and I can't fly the drone, but I promise we will be back out here in the near future.